now we're talking about smart cities. Everything is changing in our, please come on stage, everything is changing in our private lives, but there is also a public life. And as we know from the Kuskuta example, there's a lot of change also cities have to think about. Um, yeah, let, let's, we have here Siemens, Aeon and Airbus, some of the largest uh, companies in, in Europe. We are very honored to have you. We bring you together, we say champions and challengers. You're obviously the champions. <laughs> you are challenged. Yeah, there are lots of trends happening. You have launched your own operations to be active in the new world. You have partnered with companies. Um, prepared a few questions and I think the the most interesting one for me is there are so many trends happening around cities. I would like to know from you what in what you see in your jobs is really the yeah biggest change. Maybe uh, we, we start with Dirk in the middle. Yeah, we see that there is a um, strong trend towards uh, sustainable flying because uh, as we still see that uh, numbers of flights or passengers still doubling every 15 years and the aviation industry is uh, equaling 2% of the CO2 emissions globally, we have to make... How much percent? 2% of the global emissions, which is like, I think, the whole Germany. Um, so we have to look also, when we look at the growth rates, we have to look towards uh, green aircraft. So what we're currently doing, and this we do together with Siemens, we look at hybrid and electric flying. So we've already done um, for years now some collaboration on R&D together. We have developed uh, a first aircraft that even flew across the channel, fully electric. But we now look also at uh, bigger aircrafts uh, in order to go first with hybrid. But of course, depending on the speed of the development of batteries, looking at electrical flying in the long term. Is as any of you guys developing batteries? Is well, we're, we're not developing batteries. We actually, the, the biggest issue, and I'll, I'll go a step back. Yes. Your, your biggest question was, what are the biggest changes we're facing? And I'll, I'll ask this to the room, actually. Who in this room has a kit which is between 12 and 18? Just raise your hand, just if you have a kit between 12 and 18. What do they, not a lot, so you're young, good, or too old. <laughs> or shy. Or oh. shy, could be shy. <laughs> um, but is your kit going on Fridays to the greater um, events and basically protests that you're going to leave your kit a world which is worse than it was before? Not yet. Mine is, so not trust yet. me. But she's in New York. In New York, this is a little bit different. I well, think. We had this famous... Uh, girl in the World Economic Gre Forum. No? Greta, Greta. So what I'm trying to say, yeah. just the New Yorkers don't, didn't really understand it yet. Just yeah. for you. <laughs> New Yorkers use 26 times more energy than people in Jakarta. So the biggest issue we're facing at the moment, just to, to go forward, is that we live in a world where there's still 3 billion people which are going to be more by 2050. And if we're all going to use the same energy mix we have today, we're all going to be doomed. So the things Dirk is doing, the things Carson is doing is we need to fundamentally address this change. And we call it the three Ds. Decarbonization is changing everything at the moment. Mm -hmm. So the idea of being much more sustainable. In order to do this, the network will be much more decentralized. So energy will be produced. You produce energy. Everybody will produce energy and exchange it. And in order to do this, this is why we're here. We need to be digital. So these are the biggest changes we see. And uh, I think that it's something mm -hmm. which we need to solve. And we need to work big companies, small companies together to address it. Because if not, if everybody would use as much energy as your daughter, then we would have an issue in the world. It, it, not if everyone has so much energy like yeah, my daughter. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Carsten, Aeon is yeah, the, one of the biggest energy providers. Um, do you have green energy? What is the well, mega trends you see? We have today, we actually have a lot of green energy and we've completely changed our entire business model in the last years. And um, well, what's driving that? At the end of the day, it's technology. You know, we are able to produce energy that makes the world go round in a sustainable way due to technology and we had to entirely change the business model we had to spin off all the parts that made us strong power plants fossil fuel based power plants we don't have that anymore today and we've gone all in with regards to networks that enable this decentral wor world that is also digital because you have to do that in real time you have to exchange a lot of data and we do that for solutions for customers based on renewable solutions. 
And I think we are privileged in a way that we are able to try to help a little bit to tackle one of the big questions about how do we move into a sustainable future with the infrastructure, using technology and working together with clients. And that, of course, is a fundamental shift in how we think. And when I took the job, I was thinking a lot to join the why join the energy industry. And my son... When did you join? Three and a half years ago. And my son at that time, when I took the decision, texted me, Dad, don't worry too much about it. I think this is a cool job because <laughs> you maybe have the chance to change, help a little bit to make this place a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And that's very purposeful. And I feel that today. I mean, what a change. No? Three large companies and you obviously are the infrastructure of our society and you ask them what's mattering the most and you all say it's basically having a green future. Now, who is going to make it happen? I remember I was in New York, actually with my daughter, in the Central Park for uh, Global Citizen, which is a charity, mm -hmm. and they had a consumer goods company on stage and they were talking about abolishing plastic bottles. And they were very proud because they said, by 2032, we won't have any plastic bottles anymore. And everyone, wow, really? Well, that's in more than 12 years. And by then we had eight CEO changes probably and nobody remembers. So here you seem to be examples of, of, of genuine um, in, environmental protection and sustainable future. What, do you, what is coming from the politicians? Because in, in, in my view, they're completely um, yeah, over-challenged to regulate today's world and then they have this four years election processes so usually they are worried of getting elected again or um, not being negatively in the press do you have more interactions with politicians since the environmental topic resurfaced i mean now everybody agrees there is a climate change happening here um, are they reaching out more to you now I could start. I mean, yes, more. I mean, I've, I'm doing my job for two years. So in the two years, I can say a bit more, yes. Um, but for the simple reason that everybody actually, I think, wants to do the right thing, but doesn't know how. Yeah. So they're going to us to ask us how. I mean, look at Germany. Germany went from 1,000 power plants in 1990 to 1.7 million producers, prosumers, which produce it. And we still have a CO2 out output, which is worse than it was before. So they're saying, how can you help? We have a billion euros of wind energy we produce in the north of Germany, which doesn't get sort of distributed to the rest of Germany to the south. So there's big problems. So the politicians are looking to talk to us, actually also to all of you, to say, what are the technological elements which I can help by regulation to help us? So back to your question, I think there's more and more reaching out because we see the problem, but we need to find a clever way, both technology-wise and regulation-wise, to be able to address it. So you're working together with them to yeah. make the world a bit. I think, I think if you tackle some of the biggest questions like energy, you know, there is no Google without energy. There is no life without energy. There is no progress without energy. These are one of the biggest fundamental questions. I think it's important that all stakeholders talk about this. Clearly, the energy sector is a highly regulated business for very good reasons. But I think this dialogue, I think, needs to happen more. And it needs to happen on a level where also society and people in the society can follow it. It's a complex topic, and I think we as a company are obliged, as well as other stakeholders, to make it simple for people to understand. We live in a time where things get oversimplified, and that's not good. And I think that's why I think we do a lot of this, and it's required. No, I believe it's, it's our all responsibilities as individuals, as companies, and as, as politicians. So we cannot always finger point to the politicians. So of course, we would like that uh, a lot of decision making would be much faster. If you look, for example, at urban air, uh, urban air mobility, these kind of topics, they are at the moment only blocked by regulations. So I think the technology is there. Money is there. But why is it taking so long? The yeah, volocopter is, is flying, I think, for yeah, about five years. But and not flying in cities, not flying in Berlin, not flying in Munich. And the problem is there's only a business case if you can bring these models into the cities. The problem is uh, people have to trust that this technology is safe, that it's, the noise emission is, uh, is not uh, annoying. So a lot of topics where you currently have no clear, clear rules how to how to integrate these kind of new vehicles into the normal 
um, air traffic management. And this is another topic. But here we have a lack of regulation. Yeah, but Privacy law, we have an over-regulation. No, but the, today the air traffic management is already uh, at, at its edge. Uh, the last year, there was the high peak with more than 200,000 flights a day. And uh, at that time, was at the same time, was the peak in delays of flights. There was an average of 32 minutes of delays in, of 200,000 flights. Really? At, uh, 32 in June, minutes? June last year. So, so now... <laughs> and imagine that we also now join it with UTM, also that we will bring all the drone systems into the air traffic and merge them. So you think it won't happen anytime soon? I think it will not happen very fast because right now, if you see uh, globally the different uh, um, certification bodies, FAA, EASA, um, they all work on that heavily. But it will still take a long enough time till you bring these these kind of vehicles to to the cities. I don't know if you, I can show a couple of <coughs> topics that we do in this area. I don't know if this works. So this was the one I mentioned that we work with Rolls Royce and uh, and Siemens on uh, oh, yeah. hybrid flying. And then uh, maybe you can skip to the next one. You charge them on the f in, in the sky. You come with a no, it's, battery. No, it's, it's uh, using fuel cells and electrolyzer. So this is a study that we do with uh, Audi, which is looking at modern urban mobility. So you have a car and you can use the capsule, you can fly the capsule, which we tested at a scale model and we showed at the Amsterdam drone uh, fair last year. And the next one. This is, a, this is a live picture from California where we test an EV toll, which is, means uh, vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, the interesting part is you tilt the rotors and you go from upward lift into forward drive. That's uh, like the helicopter, similar, right? Yeah, it's very, yeah, it's one to two uh, passengers. N another one. This is uh, what we do for last mile cargo delivery together with uh, uh, Singapore, uh, the government, uh, where we test from the bringing uh, freight from the ships ah. to downtown. Next one. And this is uh, what we. This is a live picture as well. This is what we currently do as a as a study in Donauwert, um, in South Germany. Um, it is uh, what we call City Airbus. It will be at the beginning a piloted drone, because we believe that we have to do it in steps in order to convince society that this is safe. So it will have a pilot, three to four passengers, and then once we have the regulation and the policies, then we take the pilot out and fly autonomous. So do we, we have scooters and we have soon this, we probably don't need any cars anymore, right? <laughs> I think you need all modalities and you need to combine it much more, yeah. much more intelligent than we do today. Uh, because if you look at projections saying that in 2030, 350 billion US dollars will be, will be right. impacted by, by traffic congestion. So you're, you're all working on yeah, our clean, green future. What, ca what type of startups or what, what type of young companies you're searching, looking for, who can complement or who can fill some of the gaps you're currently uh, s struggling with? So there, there are many examples where Noah brought together champions and challengers. What types of challengers are you looking out for? Maybe, uh, Dirk, uh, sorry, sorry, Carsten, we start with, um, with you. Look, What's your dream startup you haven't found? <laughs> We, we have a lot of great partners, startups that we collaborate with. It's very important. There is not a single problem we can solve just by ourselves. I also think that the future is very much allowed around collaboration. It's not just about size. It's about speed. It's about working together. And that's very important for us. So the, one of the biggest questions we try to tackle is what does the future of a sustainable city look like? Part of that clearly is mobility. So we are working on big projects, infrastructure projects, always combining software data into that. How do we build sustainable cities where it's a better place to live for everyone, like in Stockholm, where we built a complete new quarter from waste management to heating, cooling, with renewables, mobility solutions in a circular energy economy. And we don't do that just by ourselves. We have small companies supporting us with data, software, also hardware. And what we usually do is we try to integrate partners directly into our projects and work together. And what we offer in that space is, of course, scale, access to customers, 
And um, we also learn a lot from that exchange, and hopefully it works both ways. And that's for us also a cultural thing. And to your th <coughs> first point you made, um, with the big guys, you know, the successful guys, the winners, etc. you know, when you want to stay a winner, you have to actually have a challenger mindset. And that's why it's critical that we inf yes. have infusion of this talent and this different thinking and disruptive thinking in everything we do. Five years ago, Ariana Huffington came to the first NOAA Berlin and we introduced this champion challenger concept. And she's so smart to, and fast to adapt. She said, you will remain champion when you think you are a challenger every day. <laughs> Cedric, what are you looking for? What type of startups sh should send you an email so or a message on NOAA Connect? So I'm personally looking at everything which is smart infrastructure. So anything you do to make living places safer, more comfortable, or more sustainable is something we would be interested to talk to, to you about. And this could be going from blockchain. We work with startups on blockchain technology. We work on startups on AI technology to optimize the the millions or billions of, of energy points we're going to have if you're doing sensors that's interesting but if you abstract if you have something a technology which makes your life in a in an infrastructure more comfortable safer and more sustainable you should definitely talk there about was it. a company yesterday at the female executive lunch i missed it female executive lunch all right okay. but <laughs> i had I, I i could go um, and what they're doing, they're putting like an Internet of Things sensor in big machinery and equipment and they attract data from their bus system and they can say when the machine is likely uh, to go kaput and what the performance is. Those types of companies? Absolutely. I mean, not only sensors. I mean, we w buildings have, I think, 60% of all IoT sensors in the world. We are sitting on terabytes of data, which we need to make sense of. So not only on the sensors, but if you have technology also to optimize it, that would be great. I also have another one. We have uh, Dr. Karina Rigby, which sits here. We're doing Siemensstadt. We're doing a, a real life city in a rebuilding in Berlin, where we want to put as much technology uh, as yeah? possible. So where is that? Siemensstadt is in Siemensstadt. That's a great thing. It's in <laughs> Berlin. <laughs> a part of town is called Siemens Town. It's 90 hectares. And we're going to experiment from drones to new energy systems. That's why we have our two partners also here to be able to build something which is completely We should new. do a uh, NOAA delegation next year. Absolutely. And like a, a little trip to, uh, to Siemens Town. It's a deal. Uh, but, um, <laughs> yeah. Dirk, what, what we Airbus, I mean, I didn't know you do so many things. No, I we saw you're just the winning airline manufacturing business in the no, world. We, we launched uh, ourselves two startups uh, in the last two years, one in Atlanta uh, called Airbus Aerial, where we do drone and satellite imaging services, and one six weeks ago here in Berlin called Up42. Right. It's an open platform, an ecosystem, where you have a, a marketplace to trade data, um, image data of the world uh, from oh, really? satellites, from drones. Um, and uh, what is on top is you can buy also a full business model. You can buy data and algorithm, and for example, you can count uh, cars on a parking place. Uh, so this is full, au full automated, um, so we do these kind of things. What we also do is in July we will launch an innovation center in Munich, where we invite uh, third parties, companies, universities, uni uh, the University of Munich will join us on the campus uh, for the aerospace and space and geodesy. And we will also then create a, um, a micro factory together with um, local motors where we invite everyone else for crowd development, co engineering, and rapid prototyping. So it is, we, we will have a lot of engagement with small and startups. But he's too humble. He sits <laughs> on 50% of the worldwide geospatial data you have access to. I mean, if you have any geospatial problem, Dirk is probably the person to... Well, I, th I, I, yeah. I think Boeing has some problems, according to the press. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can help them, the American friends we have. Well, I think it's wonderful to hear that the green future is on top of your minds because you are the ones who can actually make it happen as long as the politicians let you, but it seems you are talking a lot. So we're very glad you are here and let us know what startups you are looking for even offline, by email, by phone, we will find them for you. That's our job to bring the hot European startup on stage. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Thank you very much.